Right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first Debra community call of the year. So happy new year to all of you. Uh, I'm Mark Duiker, one of the community managers. And um, this, uh, this session, we have uh, quite some, some topics to, to cover. We have the announcement of two new community managers who will both uh, introduce themselves in, uh, in a second. Then we have a session from uh, Mathieu about how to combine Debra with, with SCORE. Uh, Josh will give an update on the uh, upcoming Depper release 113. I will do a quick update of Depper Day, and uh, then we'll close with the uh, regular community show and tell. Um, so let's first announce the, the new Depper community managers, uh, Cecil and Anu. Uh, Cecil, do you want to give a quick introduction? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, definitely a pleasure and and very honored to be here um, joining you all as, as one of the community managers. Um, been a long time fan of Dapper from since the Microsoft days um, and, you know, been a fan ever since. Um, a little bit about me. I'm based in Florida, um, .NET developer for a very long time, um, developer advocate for going on almost 10 years now. So, you know, throughout the years, I've done a lot of Dapper talks and demos and these types of things. So I'm really just, I'm really just looking forward to like, finding another way to contribute to the community and, and help out and be a part of like all the wonderful things that are happening here. Thanks, yeah, Anu. Really, uh, really happy that you're there. Yeah, go ahead, Anu. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Anu. I'm based in India. And at present, I'm working as a software developer uh, and a technical writer at Nirmata. So uh, like they are the creators of uh, Kaverno. And uh, I discovered Dapper last year when I was uh, exploring open source uh, projects and especially related to Golang. And uh, yeah, I'm very uh, happy to have this opportunity to, to be able to contribute to the Dapper community as a community manager. Great. Thanks, uh, Anu. Yeah, I'm really excited that, that you can both uh, join in the role of community manager. And yeah, I had the project is, is going great. It's, it's growing. So uh, yeah, uh, I can definitely use your help in all of the different activities we, we do. So thanks a lot. All right, let's uh, let's move on to um, the next topic, and it's Depper with Score and uh, Humanitech. I will uh, stop the screen sharing, and uh, you can share, uh, Mathieu. Wonderful. Let me do that. Here we are. Oh, perfect. Share. So let me know if you see my screen. Just to double check. All good, thank you, wonderful. Yes. And congrats and welcome to the new committee manager. Uh, really excited to, to be uh, invited today. Uh, thank you, Mark uh, and others uh, in the committee uh, for having me. Um, today, um, I will talk about uh, use cases. Hanu, you mentioned that you discovered and learned about Dapper last year. For me, it was kind of last month, um, actually back from KubeCon Chicago, kind of, and I played Got the Time one month ago, beginning of December, maybe to play with Dapper for the first time. Even back in the day when I was Microsoft employee, I didn't play with Dapper. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get the chance, but now it, it was a ca it's a case. And I have a use case that I want to share. And I would love actually feedback on that um, because I uh, found that uh, Dapper is bringing a lot of uh, improvement in the developer experience. Um, and the goal of this demo and use case I, I will show today is about how we could complementary, uh, even better improved um, to the next stage and next step as uh, this developer experience as well. Um, so I will show that. Uh, just to make sure, Mark, how long is my uh, slot? Just to make sure. Oh, you are muted, uh, Mark. Sorry. About 20 minutes. 20 minutes, wonderful. Yeah. And please uh, let me know when there is an app stop. And please, I want sure. question uh, live and offline as well. What I want to do is actually not doing a, an introduction to Dapper, right? You are the Dapper community. You know Dapper better than me. Um, I was transparent and honest. I just discovered Dapper. But um, actually, based on content out there uh, from most of you, um, I was able to be up to speed and up and running very quickly. So what I want to show you today is this developer workflow. Um, the first de de developer workflow is about, hey, I have two containers, two applications, actually. Um, and that's based on the Kubernetes sample app you have uh, out there. Python code, talking to a, a node uh, code, 
this node code uh, is talking to a, a state store uh, in Redis. And um, that's uh, all of that based on Dapper, right? Uh, what I want to show you as a first use case is the Docker Compose um, uh, experience with Dapper plus um, alongside with Score. And I will uh, present quickly what is Score. Um, and I want to, to show this inner loop uh, locally. The second use case we will see today is, OK, let's move that. Um, you have Dapper uh, run dash K um, out there as a CLI with Dapper init, Dapper run dash K. Here I want to show um, kind of the equivalent uh, with core Elm plus Elm to deploy uh, this exact same uh, config and setup in Kubernetes cluster, any Kubernetes cluster, actually. Um, and here we could see that we have some platform engineering involvement already, because maybe this Kubernetes is not locally. In my demo, it will be locally. So the developer will play kind of the both persona, the developer and the platform engineering, because there is, there is already with Dapper this separation of concern, right? Where you have your control plane, Dapper, installed in your Kubernetes at this stage, plus Sidecar injection, maybe. It's not the developer. Uh, it could be an help from the platform engineering plus the definition of the component, the building block, right, um, in Dapper. So it will be, here's a state store for Redis, for Postgres, here is my PubSub, et cetera. So the platform engineer will be able to plug and play with external services. Is it in cluster? Is it in Azure? Is it in AWS and GCP? So here we have this kind of separation of concern, better collaboration, abstraction for the developer, which is already interesting with Dapper. What I want to show you is, we score how we could uh, go uh, alongside with that and align with that. The third scenario is let's bring a notion of platform orchestrator where the developer now is not anymore interacting directly with a Kubernetes cluster, but it's inter um, interacting with a platform orchestrator, doing another layer of abstraction. And here we could see that the platform engineer will uh, feed as a building blocks uh, as well, uh, same approach. Uh, so that's kind of the journey, end-to-end -end scenario um, um, here. So let me jump uh, actually directly uh, to the demo here. Um, could you see my um, Visual Studio code online? Is that yep. OK? Perfect, cool. If it's not big enough, just let me know. Um, here, what I want to start with is score. What is score? And I will go straight away without the technical detail implementation yet. The so second iteration of the demo will be technical detail implementation. But here, what I want to do is, as a developer, if you look at this file here, that's a score file. What is score? Score is a um, workload specification. And here, as a developer, I will just say, hey, I need to for this app to have this container. And I know better than anyone how to inject uh, variables, environment variable, how to expose the service, how to do health check, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's kind of, of an high level workload specification, um, platform agnostic, uh, because I don't know the technical details of here, my connection string or the state store associated to that. I will just say, hey, I need a dependency. I need a state store, right? So that's the approach here. Score specification, very high level, to define how you want to deploy a containerized workload, independent of the platform, independent of the environment. Is it in dev? Is it in staging? Maybe the value will change, right? In cluster versus Azure versus in uh, AWS and GCP. So here, as a developer, I just define what I want, right? So that's a scenario here. Uh, if you look here quickly at the Python one uh, in this sample, Pretty simple. I have the same explanation, definition, right? And I have a dependencies on the node app, for example. So what I want to run uh, locally is um, this uh, make file I have. And here, actually, I have all my container running. So what I could check here, here is uh, if I look at the um, node application here. I could see if you know this uh, application that the Python uh, is talking to the uh, Node.js application and sending new order in the database, right? Um, so that's how locally 
my developer experience is kind of uh, improved, just defining uh, my score. And yes, there is a magical script behind the scenes that I will show you, but on a developer experience, that's what we want to achieve. Um, what we have also is the definition of the components, uh, the building block here, the component state store uh, associated to that, right? So two score file and a state store. And yes, the magical compost file that I will show you uh, after uh, the entire end to end demo. So that's the first step. You remember on the left, uh, the first use case, second use case, hey, on any uh, Kubernetes cluster, how I do that based on the same workload specification, right? So here, what I could do, I have a kind cluster locally. Uh, so what I could do is um, make Kubernetes up. So here, what I will do is leveraging the same specification and deploying the two apps in my um, local Kubernetes cluster. So if I do get pod, I will see that some of them were already running. The sidecar injection is done because I will show you the technical detail implementation by injecting the annotation. But here I have uh, with the same uh, configuration, the um, application up and running in Kubernetes. So if I do, uh, if I look at the logs, I will see that successfully uh, using the same state store with a Redis in cluster, uh, it's working as well, right? So that's not it. Here, I'm still as a developer doing my inner loop, Docker Compose, why not kind cluster? Let's say now I want to go to the cloud, right? You remember here, I'm binding to a Redis, but could be, I don't know, memory store in GCP, Azure Redis cache. Um, it could be Postgres as well. Um, so here I could change the type as well. But what I want at the end of the day is here, again, I want a state store. Maybe I will provide a guidance on is it Redis Postgres um, in this case. Uh, but maybe it's abstracted for me from a platform engineering standpoint, right? So here, what I want to show you is let's do another step, which is a third use case. And here I will, as a developer, interact with my um, orchestrator, right? I have an endpoint. Maybe it will be uh, with CI CD, but here I'm doing, I'm showing you command line directly interacting with the API. So here I have another scenario, which is please deploy these two score files right, in the orchestrator via the orchestrator. And please figure it out. My platform engineering uh, set up the recipes and the infrastructure and configuration in place uh, that I don't have to deal with as a developer, right? Because secret management, because abstraction, et cetera, et cetera. So here I'm asking, Please, could you deploy that in development environment? And we will do um, uh, so the call to the API in the backend. We are transforming this exact same score file and asking the platform engineer to resolve dependencies um, and deploy that anywhere, right? At, at this stage, I don't know and I don't want to know, right? So here it's how it's working. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on the UMA tech por portal and orchestrator. But at the end of the day, I have an application in development and look at that, it's deploying, it's running, and I have my two app. And I, if I go there, I could see that my node app has the state store, ready state store definition uh, dependencies, right? That my platform engineer set up for me. And then if I open the node app, I will see that it's successfully uh, getting there, right? So that was at the end to end flow. And the goal is to have the score abstraction, the score um, uh, specification here. So uh, I don't know if if we got already some questions. Feel free to interrupt me um, if uh, I'm not seeing the, uh, the question coming in. Um, so what I want to show you uh, here is um, how how the magical aspect uh, happened, right? So if I take the example here, and let me close this guy here. We could focus here on just the score compose. We used locally score compose. Score compose is taking the score file, so workload spec from the Node app or Python app, generating the partial compose file for this workload, right? So at the end of the day, it's this guy here, which is pretty much straightforward, grabbing the workload spec 
into a Compose file compliant, right? After that, um, and I have seen a lot of samples, you have uh, some Compose file out there and the goal is to have an override here. I need locally a Redis database, right? So that's how I will have that. It's not generated, it's pre-populated, predefined. What I need is a Dapper, um, Dapper sidecar for this node app, right? So here it's kind of not yet included in this core compose generating this file here previously. The sidecar is kind of predefined as a template, uh, but that's where I will grab my components locally, mount them in the volume, um, having some dependencies uh, with Dapper placement as well, right? Be because at the end of the day, when I do compose up, after generating this core specification, I will just bound and actually chain link all this compost file to have this guy up and running, right? Same for Python app. So that's the um, local uh, compose um, setup. Same for actually uh, Kubernetes, right? Here we are using score Elm, which is doing the same thing, taking the score file transforming this score file in values, in a dot values. If you know Elm, it's a values of an M chart. So generated file is this guy, compliant with Elm, and actually compliant with here, in my case, a predefined M chart, right? Because at the end of the day, what I will do after that is I will install my own workload M chart here. I could bring my own M chart, but I have a predefined one, and I will, grab the values of my workload, in this case, node app. And here I will inject the annotation needed by Dapper. Sidecar injection, the port, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, creating the Redis uh, database. Again, it's a kind of a Kubernetes experience here. Um, so that's, um, that's the experience here. Um, same for Python. The so next stage is for the orchestrator interaction. That's where, again, we are taking the same score, the same, sorry, score YAML specification, and we are actually deploying it directly to the orchestrator. And here, we don't have um, the notion of all the platform engineering definition. And I will show you some platform engineering definition because that's made, and that's the separation of concern here. Um, here, and that will, kind of end the, uh, my demo here uh, to be respectful of the time. But here, what I could do here is in my platform orchestrator, in this case, Humanity, what I will do is I will define a recipe, a definition for a Redis database, right? Type Redis. In this case, it will use Kubernetes template and it will generate here a very simple um, Redis uh, database with Kubernetes manifest. And that's for anyone asking for a Redis database, right? So that's a recipe. And when the request will come in, I will be able, if selected, to deploy this Redis database in cluster, right? Um, that's one example. But let's say you want to move to the cloud, right? As a developer, you don't have to deal with that, right? And I will show you. But before uh, showing you the cloud uh, part, what you need to do as well is having here a Redis, um, sorry, a Dapper state uh, configuration. So anyone asking for a state store, here is a generated manifest. The developer shouldn't know that. Um, it's abstracted. And here I'm binding that with the Redis in cluster, which just has the Redis host and port. I could add username and password and other configuration, but that's how I want to do that, right? Um, that's one setup. What I could do as platform engineer is actually deciding for development environment, yes, in cluster Redis with the state store and Redis in cluster. But let's say I want to go staging production with the cloud, Azure, AWS, and GCP. What I will be able to do is actually kind of the same setup, but here instead for any type Redis, I want to use Terraform recipe. So here as platform engineer, I am bringing my own Terraform module. And here I could provision memory store in GCP, Azure Redis in Azure. So here is an example to 
uh, inject variable and do um, some Terraform module to actually provision the infrastructure, getting the output, and actually inject in this exact same state store, right? So that's why it's very abstracted. And you could inject value coming from um, the um, output of the actual Redis database provision. Here, what's missing? For me, it's a username and actually the password coming from the cloud memory store in this case. Um, but that's pretty much a configuration for the platform engineering. At the end of the day, the developer is just asking for, I want a state store, maybe based on Redis, please. Please figure it out. Um, so that's the end-to-end -end, um, uh, scenario and, uh, um, and uh, demonstration that I uh, would like to, to show you. Uh, I hope that makes sense, that we're clear enough. Uh, I'm open for feedback. Um, I, to wrap up, Dapper, um, as far as I can see, is very good on the abstraction of the communication, right? Um, as developer, I, I embed the SDK, I talk to API, whatever the infrastructure is and the dependencies, there is workflow state uh, management, which is very good for the developer experience. With Core, what we, we saw is kind of abstracting all this configuration complexity um, for the platform itself. Um, and the orchestrator will help to actually orchestrate both of them, right? How I inject um, based on the context in dev environment for this application, for this environment, uh, where it will be deployed or which database it will use, right? So that's a combination of the three. Some thought here uh, to improve um, all the magical make file uh, I, I provided. Um, we discussed that uh, with Mauricio. Could we have like kind of a score compose uh, extension? Why not having a score dapper to generate the dapper YAML or kind of to accelerate and help on this uh, templating uh, from compose to Kubernetes um, uh, generation? Um, yeah, that's some thought. And uh, I really enjoy my experience using dapper. So thank you for everyone for the samples doc and to uh, the project as well and the, uh, the features. I shared the blog post uh, where I went through that. I need to update it with Compose uh, very soon. And I have the GitHub repo uh, uh, in this link. That's pretty much it for me. I hope I'm uh, right uh, within the window of the time. Uh, I hope it makes sense. And uh, that was interesting for you. Thank you again for having me. Any question? Thank you very much, uh, Macho. You're definitely well on time. Uh, anyone, any questions? Questions for uh, Mathieu right now? Thank you, Yaron. Now, at least it's good to know that you're already in contact with, uh, with Mauricio, right? Yeah, he, he provided uh, great insights, uh, especially on the Compose uh, part. Uh, in my blog post, again, I didn't do the compost part, but uh, Mauricio and Alice provided me great feedback. So I updated that. Uh, that's why the demo is make more sense to to maybe to show a score. And Mauricio, feel free to ping me uh, offline as well if it's um, if it's taking into account some of uh, our discussion. Sounds good. And Mark, can you have a standard template uh, for Dapper user? Um, yes, actually, that's a good point. Um, what we call recipe, building blocks, um, and, and you may take resource definition. Uh, that's the goal uh, to have that. Um, and what we call the resource type. Um, so we want to have the dapper state um, where I'm not sure and we are not sure yet. It's about the pub sub uh, subscription versus um, uh, publisher. Uh, but yeah, that's the goal. Um, Great. Right. Yeah. Do, do you also, uh, Mark here, actually speaking. So, do you actually have any people asking for DAPA yet that you see inside uh, your community? So, I, uh, I, I can't uh, provide name, but um, I'm conducting a POC with that, with a customer. Um, do I have customer with that yet? No, but it's a POC proof of concept uh, that I'm conducting uh, currently. So, it's involving and getting feedback from you all. 
plus the customer. Um, yeah. I was just looking at your, your slide deck really quickly. And so I see like their score and then there's Humanitech is like that intersection is there. That's, that's there. Can I go from score to Kubernetes without Humanitech or because as a yeah. developer, let's say, let's say I don't have like, you know, that person to manage that middle part for me. Right. Like, can I, can I go straight through? Yeah, exactly. You see this use case at, on the middle, in the middle. Yes. That's independently okay. of you may take, you see, and that's the yeah. second demonstration where you generate right. the M values and you use a predefined M chart and you are straight to Kubernetes without you tech. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the benefits of score, right? I have one definition and I could port that, uh, and having the technical specificities for compose for Kubernetes. And here for Humanitech, we have other partnership going on. Um, but yeah, that's a good. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Cool. All right. If there are no further questions, then thank you, Anita Macho. Very interested to see uh, in which direction this is going. Um, and let's move on to the Depper 113 release update. Uh, sure. Thank you for having me. Cool. That's me. Um, Mark, do you want to just share your screen? It might be easier. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because we've only, only got one slide. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. I am the release lead for 113. Uh, so I just wanted to briefly bring up um, a few headline features and an update on where we are. I'm sure in the next coming weeks and certainly after the release, uh, we'll do some more presentations and showing off uh, things that we've added. But just to give everyone a heads up, we've got the release day is pinned for the 30th of January. Um, that's obviously never truly set in stone, but that is certainly the target. Um, so expect that uh, the release coming you know, end of month, early February. Um, some headline features I wanted to call out, certainly not an exhaustive list. Um, but so you have some things that maybe you didn't know were coming or might interest you, um, and you can kind of go away and, and read more about it. Um, and in fact, it'd be amazing if you could, you know, try those features early as well, um, with a kind of edge or alpha build, um, if that interests you. So, uh, one thing was reducing metrics cardinality, um, issue that we saw was the metrics that Dapper D exposed had a large amount of cardinality. So... Uh, concretely meaning Prometheus metrics with lots of labels, um, which don't handle very well in a um, time series database and kind of explodes things quite a lot. So reduce the cardinality there. Um, so you should see some performance improvements in your metrics, uh, which is great. Uh, hot reloading uh, of components, a highly requested feature is finally coming in 113. Um, and in fact is merged into master now. So it's definitely coming, uh, which is good. Um, this means that you do not need to restart your Dapper D in order to bring, in order to load new updates um, to your existing components that are loaded, or you can delete components, create new ones, things like this, both in self-hosted and Kubernetes mode. So this will be a preview feature, so you'll need to opt in mm -hmm. to use it. Um, but yeah, it's great that that's finally there. Next is workflows. Um, there's been a ton of work and workflows on this release. Um, no time to go into all of the details now, um, but we're certainly on the road to stable, which is great. Um, and we're hoping to get workflows to um, you know, V1 stable um, kind of later this year. Uh, lots of improvements to security, um, networking, various performance improvements um, generally within Dapper, which is great. Um, spent, we've been spending a lot of time over the past, you know, 12 months or so um, getting to a better place um, in terms of security. Um, so uh, yeah, those things are starting to come into fruition, which is great. Um, the next one, um, we have introduced Dapper API error code. So this is interesting, particularly for application developers using Dapper. Um, so we have created a system whereby we have standardized the response um, when an error occurs when using an API. So I'm thinking things like 
this state store doesn't exist or this key doesn't exist, things like this. Um, we have now produced or starting to produce um, or have at least produced a, a um, schema for how these errors are represented back to the application. So you can make, uh, so the application itself, when you develop your program, uh, you can start to do things with that error. You don't need to do nasty string matching or anything like this. Everything is now, now nicely typed. Um, it's worth noting that this is an introduction to the error codes. We've implemented uh, a few, um, a fair few, but certainly not all of ones that we would um, like to implement. Um, and of course, you know, this is a work in progress, um, I suppose, for, for the you know, lifetime of the project, right? Um, can always add more error codes. Um, so yeah, it would be great once this is, you know, merged in and, and released out um, for, for you know, if you're looking to contribute to Dapper, this is a really, really good place to, to start um, as it's, you know, nicely scoped piece of work. And um, yeah, there's hopefully quite a lot of documentation on how to get started. So um, yeah, if you're interested in contributing to the project, that's a, that's a definitely great place to start. Um, Next one is the actor subsystem. Uh, there's been lots of improvements in um, placement. Um, so placement um, is the database service uh, thing, I suppose, that um, you can call it, that we use to store um, actor type information and, and how that gets. And that's how we, what we use to decimate, uh, disseminate actor um, enabled hosts uh, to other, other hosts. Um, and so there's been lots of improvements to that, um, which is great. Um, so we should see some uh, stability and performance improvements um, to actor subsystem generally. And that obviously ties in as well to, to workflows since, since workflows is built on top of actors. And finally, um, I have on my list here is uh, support for actors in the Rust SDK, which is great. Um, it's good to see Rust having some love um, as um, and yeah, getting some more kind of feature parity between the SDKs is, is always great. Um, again, this is not a complete list. There are lots and lots of things uh, happening in the Dapper project always. Um, but yeah, this was the kind of top of mind things that came to uh, that came to mind at, at least for me. Um, and as I say, we'll we'll probably be talking about more about the one thirteen release in the coming weeks as we get close to the release day, and then obviously after the release itself. Um, so uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. We already have a question from Peter. Uh, does Hot Reload include PubSub subscription? It does not. No, um, this is just for your component specs. So your component, uh, your PubSub component in itself um, is definitely covered. Um, middlewares, state stores, these types of things. Uh, but no, we do not implement Hot Reloading for PubSub subscriptions just yet. Um, certainly on the roadmap, um, in fact, I think subscriptions are the one that we want to do next um, because you know it's a highly used feature. Um, but it is our intention to cover you know subscriptions, configurations, HTTP endpoints, um, resiliencies, um, all of these. We intend to to enable hot reloading. Um, components was first. It's a natural choice to do do first. Um, uh, so yeah. Yep. Thank you. And then um, with Waldo is asking a long question. Workflow limitations were cited by Azure Container Apps Group for why they're not releasing workflow. Not even in preview yet. Okay, Yaron is answering there with the limitations from from Debra there. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, that's that's enough for you now. Uh, Otherwise, you're also active well, on the, the Debra Discord, right? Yeah. Well, I, I guess I, I tried to find like an issue in which someone had dug into these. I, I guess I, I'm aware of the limitations themselves. But I tried to dig into who's working on them and yeah, you know, what what why are those? Uh, I guess how are they identified? You know <laughs> what uh, what what is being done about it? So I could uh, try to help out with that, but I, I couldn't find anything. So the question is less about what are the limitations and more where is that being worked on? Okay. Hi, Witt. Uh, my name is Ron. I'm a Dapper maintainer. Um, so we have a bunch of issues tracking all of the work that needs to be done for um, workflows. Um, all of these limitations are currently being worked on um, on the path to making workflows stable, which we're trying to get for Dapper um, 115. 
And um, there is one issue that I think encapsulates all of those um, sub-issues that, that you can look at. Um, I will try to find it now and put it um, on chat. And basically, if you uh, track that issue, you should be able to find your way into different PRs um, that are attached to um, issues that have to do with those limitations that you mentioned earlier. All right. Thank you. And I think Mike just beat me to it. And yes, that's the correct Thank you. Thank you both, Jorun and Mike. Excellent. All right. Any other questions for the release? All right. Thanks again, uh, Josh. Yeah, cheers. All right. Uh, let's move on. Quick update about Depper Day. So the CFP is now closed and the program committee uh, will be reviewing all of these CFPs for the next couple of days. Uh, we don't have a lot of time for that because already later this month we will uh, announce the speakers and announce the uh, the schedule. Uh, so uh, keep your eye open for, for that on, uh, on Twitter. Then our final section, the community show and tell. I've collected uh, what has been uh, posted in the community uh, already in December, of course, because we didn't have a community call in December. And so these are the um, blog posts. If I just quickly run through them, uh, this one on Medium, uh, the Depper effect reshaping Kubernetes microservices. This is a pretty high level uh, blog post about, about Depper and how you can configure it. Another one on uh, Medium. Uh, unlocking distribute systems, a deep dive into Depper building blocks. This is um, also quite an, an high level, bit of shorter blog post. Then uh, two blog posts by uh, Mauricio. Um, back to basics, APIs to build them all. Uh, one about Depper state stores and one about Depper on Kubernetes. A bit more uh, hands-on, so if you want to do like uh, Depper on, uh, with Java, definitely look into the to these posts. And yeah, by looking at the numbering, there'll probably be more, right, Mauricio? More coming, yes. Yes, all right. Uh, this, all right, thanks. Uh, this is the blog post and Macho referred to, but um, as he mentioned, he will update this a bit a bit more. Uh, so okay, uh, we'll probably highlight it again then next uh, next time when it's updated. But uh, thanks for this write up. Um, and the final one I want to highlight is a uh, post by Simon Headley, uh, building event driven systems at scale in Kubernetes with Depper. Uh, as again, it's a multi part um, um, blog series, um, but this one is yeah. Especially the, the end is very interesting. I'll just quickly sc th scroll through it. Um, but this is a very interesting section, uh, part of the blog post, uh, because they really mentioned uh, about the, the scale and, and what, what they're using Dapper for. Uh, so the, a lot of events I need, uh, per day and also a bit of information about which services and about the sizing. Um, so yeah, definitely have a um, read into this one. Those are the uh, blog posts created uh, last month, um, then some uh, YouTube videos. So this session from uh, Kendall um, that she gave at Skill by the Bay is now online. Then we have a session again from Mauricio uh, that's online on YouTube from uh, Raw Code Academy. It's like a Dapper 101 uh, session. Um, and I did a session for uh, the festive tech calendar, which is about uh, Dapper workflow and how to create workflows in .NET. Um, then what I found on Twitter or X, um, Paul gave a, a session in December about um, Dapper at Dev Intersection. So thanks for that, Paul. I gave a session uh, last December at Cloud Brew in, in Belgium. Uh, thanks to, to Andre for making these pictures. Um, on the same conference there, I uh, met Alex and Alex did also a Dapper talk there. Uh, that was more like an introductory um, topic. So thank you, Alex, for doing that. And then this was announced this week. Uh, so um, Marcel de Vries, he will uh, give a Depper workshop at Visual Studio Live. That's in March. So uh, if you're in Las Vegas around that time, definitely give this a go. And this is the last update. Um, I have to explain this a bit. So um, uh, I've met Leila at an NDC conference like a couple of months ago. She gave a session about um, yeah, distributed applications or also modular monoliths. Um, she was a bit skeptical about Depper because she didn't have like a great experience a couple of years ago when she tried it. Uh, so after the session, we had a bit of a chat and I told her, okay, if you want to try Depper again, please reach out and, and we can look into stuff together. And that's what happened last week. Um, and it's actually, yeah, it worked very well for the both of us because she learned a bit more about Depper and she actually gave me quite a lot of feedback about uh, how we can improve the documentation. Uh, so this worked out really well. Uh, so if you know someone who uh, 
might be a bit skeptical or critical about Dapper. That, that's always fine, of course. Um, but maybe there, yeah, that it's based on previous or experiences from a long time ago. Uh, please connect them to me, and I'm happy happy to do this uh, uh, more often, and uh, we can, yeah, both learn from that. So that was a great experience. All right. So if you have something to share about Dapper, a blog you career you you wrote or a video you created, uh, post it on the Dapper Discord in the show and tell section. I will copy all of the links that I've uh, just shared there as well. Um, and well, probably you, uh, you're you're already Dapper community supporters, uh, so probably you already have this badge. If not, uh, definitely uh, claim this badge. Uh, if you're watching this online, um, please go to this uh, link on on Holopin, and uh, you can earn this di digital badge. All right, is there anything left that we want to discuss? So. Yes. Uh, hi, so I'm on, uh, I'm Arnav, hi everyone. Uh, we are on, I and Tanmay, we are on the Azure Container Instances team. And we are working on um, trying out a dapper with ACI, basically. Uh, so one of the things we were uh, trying to uh, get it working was uh, name resolution through Azure Private DNS. And we already have some, uh, we have a, a fork and we have our code and we tested it out and it worked. So we were figuring, wondering like how we can uh, contribute and uh, Raise a pull request. Like, what's the uh, correct procedure to do that? Um, yeah. Hi. Um, so the first step is not to raise a pull request, but actually raise an issue that describes the problem that you want to solve with the pull request. Um, then get feedback, and uh, if there is a consensus from uh, maintainers that this is uh, something that you know one accepting to Dapper, then you get the go ahead to uh, create the pull request. So um, just create an issue on the Dapper Dapper repository. I imagine if if that's a relevant repository for you, or a components country, but I imagine it's one of the two. Um, and then mention you know what the issue was that you're experiencing, what the proposed solution is, you know maybe a few words about the architecture, um, and the uh, implementation, and we can take it from there. Okay, so as part of the issue, we should describe uh, like what changes are like what the changes are proposed as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, hi, I'm Tanmay. I'm Yeah, Tanmay, please go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, the changes are not uh, exactly set in stone. So one of the um, major changes or uh, like an addition to Dapper that we require is uh, support for um, secret key refs and uh, name resolution components, uh, config files. So currently, uh, the uh, like any name resolution component that does not support uh, fetching certain secrets from any secret world. Mm, okay, yeah, I mean that's a valid feature request. So uh, you can open an issue and we can take a discussion there. Uh, I actually have opened up the issue. Should I share it here? Or... Yeah, yeah, feel free to share. We can uh, look at it. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for Anita, including the link. Uh, that's that's excellent. Super. So you can uh, can continue the discussion there, uh, or of course on on our Dapper Discord. All right. I think that's it for for today, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, for joining, and uh, see you again in two weeks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Bye.